So welcome, this is um, Coral Draw 2020 and I just thought I'd give you a quick uh, overview of some of the new features and just a little run through of some of the different tools around the outside. So if you're not familiar with Coral Draw, um, if you've not used it before, this is, in my opinion, the best software for uh, sign writing, t-shirt printing, uh, flyer design, and I'll put a little uh, video together that um, um, I, I'm doing for um, hoodies, for like Levis hoodies and stuff, so I'll put together a little video um, for you as well, so like a little marketing flyer which you can use so, uh, when we get back to normal, you can get out there. And uh, if you're interested in t-shirt printing at all, I've got a course and that's over at SE Workwear Academia. And that's a full course on that drawing using Coral Draw, GIMP, uh, free software. Um, and then we're going through the sales skills course where we talk about all the different products. Um, and then we go through to my workshop where we've got all the machinery like direct -to garment printing, vinyl cutting, um, all sorts of different machines and lots of embroidery machines. So we talk about the whole industry. So have a click on the link below. And for now, let's get started on Coral Draw 2020. So it looks very similar to most of the other versions, although this time it's actually got some really cool new features. So I just added a little bit of a line grid baseline in here, just so that I can show you when we get down to some of the new tools, which are the typography tools. But running down the left hand side here, you've got your toolbox, um, pretty standard. Um, as normal with the shape tools, <clears throat> smear, smears and stuff, um, twirl, um, these are all sort of vector manipulation tools and then we've got crop for bitmaps, knife for slicing up, zoom and pan, drawing tools like the, my particular favourite is the Bezier, Bezier tool um, and then we've got some um, drawing tools, some shapes, so we've got rectangles, ecliptes, lots of uh, different sort of shapes along here text tool, grid, and so on and so on, all the way down, shadow, contours, distort tool, envelope tool, which is a very good tool, and a 3D extrude tool, uh, transparency, and then you've got your colors down here. Going along the top, if you need to add in more um, options up here, like at the moment it's got the, the standard, um, this one here is, let me just have a quick look, this one's called, cool. I think it's a transformation one, but if we go to uh, tools, <clears throat> sorry, windows, why am I working, what am I on about, and toolbars, um, at the moment here we've got selected in the top, we've got the menu bar which is the one that op uh, for opening, saving, etc, which is up here, um, and then we've got um, the toolbox and property bar, this, this one where it says A5 and the size, that's the property bar, if I wanted a transformation tool, uh, um, box then I'd grab this one and I could just drop that in at the top there, transformation tool toolbar um, and that gives me a lot more information there when I can just uh, flip things etc but anyway <clears throat> if you if you want to get rid of any of those all you got to do is just literally just grab drag, drag them out and get rid of them um, or you can just go down to your toolbar like that and just turn them off whichever you want um, over this side now what you've got is your flyouts your dockers and again, if you're missing any of the dockers, you can go back up to Windows, Dockers, and add them in on here. Um, you've got the properties, which if you just say, let's just like, say for argument's sake, you picked up a, a circle. Um, this property here, would, and you wanted to fill it, it shows you the line fill, the solid fill, which is the fill, the fill color, transparency, some effects tools, etc. If you wanted to fill it with a color, you click on the uniform fill there and then you could click on green to, to fill that solid. If you wanted to pick a, a, a color, you can pick on the, the color spectrum tool there and you can change that to wherever you want. Um, and as you do, the colors will get added in on the palette down on the bottom left hand side here. Um, you've also got um, gradient colors where you can change the color. I could go from there to, let's just go, um, ooh, let's go to a red or something. So I'll click on there. Um, let's go to the color swatches and nice and easy. And you can go like that. You can also say how you want that to uh, gradient. So this one is from a, so it's a linear gradient, but then this one here is a, a radial gradient, um, inside to out, outside to in. I think on that one, and then this one is um, yeah going in a clockwise direction or whatever. But you can change change things. You can add in extra color steps here as well. If I wanted to add in a color like green there you go we can add that in it would probably be better if i showed you it like 
like uh, that <clears throat> and then you can if you want you can change how harsh those steps come through see okay um, if you get stuck at any point and you're not sure where you are you can click on the hints at the top there and it'll tell you all about the hints down here transformation tool that's about the sizing and the rotation and and then you've got uh, things like your layers and so on as well which are the objects here so let's just jump over and let's show you some of the new features so I'm going to go to page two here and this is uh, one of the features where you can do like an inner shadow and stuff and move things around so I'm going to d delete that I'm going to delete all of that let's start from scratch so what I would do in a situation like this to show you something is maybe put in a polygon uh, to make that uniform I'm holding down a control key if I wanted to um, actually change the size and keep it the aspect ratio square or proportional there I'm holding down the shift key and the control key and anyway, I'm going to put that in the middle and I'm going to get um, a different shape and I'm probably going to put a square in there in the middle okay that's cool <clears throat> so I'm going to highlight both of those now if I wanted to align them centrally I could go E and then C and that will align it through the vertical and horizontal axis now let's go over to the blend tool and this one I'm going to um, drag from the center, uh, sorry, from the edge of this square to the center, and that's going to, you can see, that's given me this rather cool sort of effect. Um, now, what we can do here is I can increase the amount of steps or decrease as I want. <clears throat> um, the Now, what I could do here is I could actually add some color. So let's just say I want to um, yellow through the fill, but the center one, I actually want that orange. So if I do that, what happens there? it then works on a color blend cycle all the way back you see so if you go up to the top here you can see that you've got a direct color blend we can also have a clockwise color blend which isn't as apparent when you have got such a subtle color change there you can then um, have this particular one which is a, a counterclockwise color blend and um, that actually changes the acceleration of color blend so how harsh or subtle the color blend is you see so if you move that around very cool and then you can unclip the padlock and you can really start to play around with features um, okay so let's go back to this um, first one and uh, now if I right clicked on the mouse button up here on the, the no fill then I can get rid of that now that the uh, the lines on there now if I was to go to let's just say um, let's, let's just make the color slightly harsher so let's go uh, something that's really different and let's go back to the um, one there let's use this one and, and let's put this back down something a bit more sensible so we can see it yeah there we go um, so as you see we can move this around we can manipulate it as much as we want and then I could go back to the outside um, original um, shape which was the polygon and I could increase the amount of um, points we've got on there I can use the shape tool I can manipulate it um, so it's got some really cool features on there I really like what, what's going on with there and that's like using this new inner shadow that they call it um, lots of different things there you can break them apart we can add some um, shading into it we can make it look like 3d um, but I'll leave that for you to play around with um, quite cool so jumping across the next thing now is this new awesome trace feature look at that I mean that's a real hideous pixel pixelated sort of not not the worst but definitely would be real hard getting a trace off this um, and if you did you'd probably lose a lot of detail but you can see straight away we've actually got some real good detail coming out of that so with this new trace tool you could go quick trace but what you do is you go down to a high or low quality image, click on that, and you've now got um, some settings up here that you didn't previously have. So in this particular case, it's saying I got three colors. I'll probably drop that down to two, just black and white to make that easy. Um, and I want an illustration um, rather than a photo trace. And this one now, it will give you an estimated time. Um, but if I drop, just do that because this one's already done it. It's not gonna actually lag and slow the computer down but you can see straight away there I can ungroup that straight away and I can manipulate and do what I want with that change it around change some different components different colors 
And if I wanted to, I could then go in and, um, sorry, take that out of there, go in and um, edit bits and pieces if I needed to. Uh, yeah, so that's looking good. And I could probably uh, combine all of that together, get rid of the background. Yeah, so the trace tool is brilliant. It's really, really good. I've had a quite a play with that. Um, it can be pretty memory hungry um, and heavy on the on the processor GPU. So just bear that in mind. Um, and just uh, it will give you an estimated time. Some of the things I've I've played around with on this particular computer have taken sort of 30 seconds or so. But on my computer, I'd use at work for drawing. Um, that's a lot quicker. So it would eat through that. Next up is the orthography um, improvement. So the, the the, the typefaces and what we've got now is variable font feature. So here we've got standard Arial font and underneath I've got a variable font. Now you'd need to get variable fonts installed and there's a website called v-fonts.com um, um, but have a look for free variable fonts, uh, fonts on the internet and you'll be able to download those and install them. Uh, you don't need to restart CorelDRAW, it will pick them up straight away in your operating system and load them into the software. So here we've got a um, standard font and underneath we've got a variable font. So if I view this as, as a wireframe image, a uh, wireframe view, you can see that uh, this is one solid outline where this, these uh, variable fonts have different um, segments. And so these are the points that will actually, will actually change. Now to find the variable fonts on your computer, you would either go to the flyout, which is the properties on the side, um, or you go from the top here and if you you want to find the variable fonts what you need to do is come across to um, to your fonts drop down menu click on the side select variable fonts from this filter and then it will list all the variable variable fonts that we have available and well, I've only got um, this one installed on my computer here so just to show you for a moment but um, this one does have options um, but if I, if I now click on this little tool just next to um, the actual typeface type, um, like for boulderizing or the options for the typeface, sorry, um, this will give me some new features. So this one in particular, I'm, I'm able to change the width of the font and I'm also able to change the heavy or the gradient of the font, the thickness of the letters and everything. So if I put this back, view this now in enhanced mode, go back to normal, you'll see that if I increase this weight right up, and if I actually duplicated that and put it underneath, and this one I set to the opposite end of the spectrum, you can see the difference, which is really handy um, for t-shirt printing. And something that we talk about in my course, um, because if you were, cutting this on a vinyl cutter or even if you were screen printing it's sometimes just a little bit too thin uh, especially if you were using some of the new two-part paper uh, no weed paper which looks like screen print finish um, then quite often you get issues with losing some of the quality around the outside so just to be able to give it a little bit more density rather than having to go down the traditional road which we would have done where where we run a contour like this around the outside um, and I'll just show you how, what that looks like with a black edge. Um, there you go, you see that's what, what you actually, I'll just show you in that colour so you can see it. Um, that's how you would sort of just thicken the font up. So this is great because it's going to save you a few, a few um, a bit of time messing around. But also, the, the, some of the fonts I've got installed on the computer at work, the variable fonts, they've got an absolute stack of features. So things like that, you can even move the dots higher, it, you can extend the, the, the tops of these uh, lowercase letters, or they'd say where the G is hanging down the, the tail of the G, that will stretch down with the P or the Q or the Y. So yeah, cool, that's cool. So nice little feature there. Um, artifacts, which are really good. So this is a photo that I've just um, downloaded. Um, so let me go back to, let's delete that. And let me bring one across for you. So let me just go over here. Okay, let's bring this one across. So this is like a picture of a cottage, do something different. Um, it's a little bit dark, but it doesn't matter just for the minute. <clears throat> so if I wanted to make this look like um, I painted it or done something different with it, what I'd do is go to effects. I'd be creative and I would apply the art style. 
Um, now this is cool because this gives you the option to um, play around with it. So let's have a little look. So this might be a little bit um, slow on the uptake on this computer because it's not got a best graphics card in it. Um, this is more of a a workstation. Um, let's just pause that two seconds. There you go. So you can see what's done now. I mean, this is just bold edges. It's just changed to make it look like um, I don't know, it just really accentuates all of the bold bold edges on there. And um, there's loads and loads of different features on here. Some of them are very cool. Um, what else have we got on here? Let's go um, graphite. And we'll reset that. Smooth acrylic. That'll be interesting. Let's go graphite and preview that there you go so that looks like um, almost like a uh, pastel or um, like a charcoal sort of finish yeah so you get the idea also there's an upscale tool on here as well which is very cool um, if you wanted to change this from 72 dpi to say 300 dpi what happens normally is that the, the pixelation becomes pretty hideous um, when you try to enlarge a bitmap um, but with this one you've got actually a resample feature now where you can this one you see it's running at 136 dpi I can change that to 300 and it will sit there and it will re-rasterize the image and, and what it will do is actually it's got some real cool AI in there which will try to enhance the image and make it a lot crisper okay so uh, that's uh, just a few of the new features that we're running through Coral Draw 2020 at the minute. It's very, very good. I'm really enjoying it. And uh, the course uh, that I'm doing at the moment on the T-shirt printing, which is nearly finished now, um, I've reshot most of it in Coral Draw 2020 just because uh, it's bang up today. And that's a, a legendary piece of software in my opinion. So thanks for watching and uh, speak to you soon.